while we wait for the plants to establish, it's a good time to consider which butterflies you want to keep. Of course you could just order a mixture of pupae, enjoy flying them, and have a lot of lantana as a nectar source, and you're sorted. But I thought for this year we would pick 10 new species to focus on, 5 of these we can try and breed, and the other 5 are just for flying and enjoying. So let's look at the 5 species which we're going to fly and enjoy. Firstly, it's the paper kite butterfly, Idealukanui. These are from Asia, usually Thailand or the Philippines. They are quite a long-lived species, often living for 8 to 12 weeks. They feed on a plant called Parsonsia and hatch from bright yellow pupae. Now you might be asking, why aren't we going to breed these or some of the other species? And the simple answer is that their caterpillar food plants just aren't commonly available or they are difficult to grow in the quantities required. So whilst we can't breed them, we can still enjoy them and in return give them a happy life in a safe environment filled with flowers. Next up we have the clipper, Parthena sylvia. These are again from Asia and can live for several months. The adults feed on a mixture of fruit and flowers and you will find that they are available in different colours. Brown, which is the Philippine form. Blue, which is the Thailand form and there is also a one which is found on the borders of Thailand. These all feed on Adenia and Tinospora plants. The third species we're going to keep is the giant glasswing, Methona confusa. These large clear wings are from Ecuador and are fairly long lived. The adults feed on nectar from flowers and if they do breed, they lay on a plant called Brunfelsia. This is available from some garden centres, it does tend to be quite slow growing but if you were able to find it, you could have a go of breeding them. Then we have Papilio palinurus, the emerald swallowtail. I have seen some instances of people breeding these with citrus, but it seems to be quite a rare occurrence, and they usually need a food plant called Eurodia. Adults feed on flowers and live for two to three weeks. Next up we have the great orange tip, Hebemoya glossipper. This originates from the Philippines and is a species we might be able to breed. It is supposed to feed on Cleome spinosa, a common bedding plant called the spider flower. However, when I've tried it before, I've not had much success in getting them to lay. This is also something important to consider with all of the butterflies that you buy, which you intend to breed. Sometimes you will receive pupae of the same species from different farms, different locations, and there could be a separate subspecies. Each of these may have a preference for a certain plant. So for example, someone might say blue morphals will lay on peanut plants, or the great orange tip lays on cleome, and that may well be true of the particular pupae they have received, but it isn't always the case that all pupae of a species from every location are going to use the same plant. So if possible, it's a good idea to offer a variety of plants for egg laying. So that's the five that we're going to fly, now let's look at the ones we want to breed. Let's start with one of the most recognisable butterflies, the monarch, Danis plexippus. These are found all through North and Central America and will feed on Asclepias, more commonly known as milkweed. We will be growing some from seed, as well as growing on our existing plants. The larvae eat a huge amount of leaf, so you will have to grow as much as you can to be prepared. Next up is another North and Central American species, the zebra, Heliconius chavitonius. These are a really good species for beginners and I wanted to keep them in the greenhouse last year but they just weren't available. I have been keeping some as a colony since autumn and they are finally available to buy as pupae as well from the main suppliers. These will be feeding on the passionflower plants that we added to the setup. Then we have the Scarlet Mormon Papilio womensovia. This is a large Papilio species from the Philippines. They feed on nectar and live for two to four weeks. Females will lay their eggs on citrus and choisia, and luckily we have a good supply of leaf already available. From Central and South America, it's the Malachite Cyprita stellines. These feed on Roelia, as well as a number of other plants, which are available to buy online. So we will be giving them a try. 
The adults feed mostly on rotten fruit as well as some flowers and do tend to live for quite a long time, usually for four to six weeks. And finally, a new species which I've not bred before, Ariadne Ariadne. These small butterflies fly beautifully in a greenhouse and are said to feed on the castor oil plant, Rachinus. We will be growing some plants from seed in preparation. I know we said we're only going to pick five species to breed, but let's add two more to the mix. The blue Morpho, Morpho Helena, and we'll pick a different species of Caligo, the owl butterfly, instead of Memnon or Eurylocus. The Morphos are going to lay and feed on Macuna and Peanut, which we're going to grow from seed. And the Caligos will feed on the Cannas we planted earlier in the season, as well as some banana plants that we already have established. So that's the butterflies picked. Once we have the plants grown a little more, we'll be ordering the butterflies and keeping our fingers crossed that the species we want are going to be available. Next time we're going to start planting the seeds for the food plants, so I'll see you then.